let's see how the Lord will help us tonight it's always an honor bringing the word of the Lord because you see the word of God represents the boundaries of his commitment to man God cannot be committed to man outside of the provisions of scripture the Bible and scripture is the jurisdiction of his commitment that is not all he can do but in relation to man he has limited himself to the provisions in scripture so any dimension that scripture does not allow cannot be seen in the lifetime of a man the Bible represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment so every time scripture is opened we're not just it's, it's more than a Bible study it's an allowance to say Lord we have found that this is how far you can come through for us and so we authorize you and we grant you access through our willingness even though he is mighty he has limited himself to the will of man so if your will rejects him the Bible says as many as received him anything received can be rejected hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I trust that the Lord will help us tonight I came with a burden just to share a few things I am very passionate about strengthening the body of Christ and helping believers grow and mature in the things of the spirit and I do not take conferences like this for granted um, the only hope we have is our knowledge of the truth this is what brings liberty this is what brings efficiency this is what brings growth if we do not contend for spiritual growth then we will get to a point where we will not be able to do much as far as the kingdom is concerned praise the lord so more than just receiving miracles and breakthroughs more than receiving healings i know that people are here for various reasons and god is benevolent enough in fact let me start by saying this in any meeting that was ordained by god four things must and should happen number one there must be encounters I'll be teaching on that shortly but there has to be if it was authorized by God then there has to be encounters the Bible says ye are come unto Mount Zion then he begins to describe activities that happens there he says in Zion there are a new bearable company of angels not just members angels are there too there are the spirits of just men made perfect Christ himself the first the begotten of the father several things happen within that place encounters the goal of an encounter is to create certainty and conviction when a generation lacks encounters our convictions will vacillate so we believe this today and we believe that tomorrow and we're no longer sure of this but the apostle said I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded number two there must be transformation transformation very important the ministry of the word brings transformation growth in our understanding enlightenment that access to light opens up our eyes so that we are no longer looking through a, a hazy lens the Bible says but we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror we are not just beholding and stopping there we are changed the Bible says transformation number three the third thing that should happen in every meeting where God is truly represented is that an opportunity must be given for the love and the power of God to be made manifest in the midst of his people God is love and the character of love is that it gives so the benevolence of God must be represented in every meeting when lives are changed when yokes are taken off people when destinies are transformed when age-long captivities end overnight that is the signature of God's love in the midst of his people more than an endorsement of the power of a man of God is a message from God that I am still love and I am still mighty 
the same way sickness and infirmity and all these ills they are like letters from satan to god using man as the paper so he writes on man the zenith of god's creation it's a mockery of god's integrity so when god stretches his hands it's a reply also using man to speak to satan that i am still king of kings and lord of lords so when miracles and signs and wonders do not happen to the degree that brings glory to the christ it begins to misrepresent the names and the attributes of god the names of god should not just be believed theologically there should be a demonstration of the reality of it so if you call him el shaddai there must be space in your life where that name would be represented so that when you are teaching your children it will not just be from history and theology you will now say the things that we have seen the things that we have heard even that which our hands have handled of the word of life Number four, the fourth thing that must happen every time we gather like this is that there must be impartations. And this impartation is not just from the man of God to you. Impartation is more than just a transference of grace. It's also the mingling of graces. Because you see, in an atmosphere like this, it's not only the man of God's anointing that is flowing someone seated close to you can also be carrying a grace that your destiny is looking for so your sensitivity should not just be on the person preaching it should be on the multifaceted dimensions of the grace of God scattered within that vicinity so I can be teaching and not have the grace for prayer but someone seated close to you can have that grace if you can open up your heart while you are receiving the teaching grace something from him he may not be the preacher but his altar is still alive you should not walk out you should know what you received at the end of a meeting if you just go out and just say i was blessed that's 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 too careless for a serious christian you should leave the meeting knowing specifics that this grace came upon me speed came upon me restoration came upon me hunger came upon me the appetite for spiritual things came upon me death to the flesh came upon me an engracing came upon me an anointing i did not come for the meeting which is now returning with me when saul met samuel he was not in confusion as to the fact that something had come upon him are you blessed so while you are seated please if you can lay hands on your head and declare something must break open in my destiny this night oh god i come with a cry i come with a cry more than the ministration of a man i pray for encounters i pray for transformation illumination by the spirit of revelation i pray oh god that your outstretched arm will rest upon my life Are you praying for everyone that asked receive it? Pray, oh God, that grace for prayer that I've longed for. This is a moment where it will mantle my life. That grace for the prophetic, that grace in the name of Jesus, that discipline in the spirit that I need to push through. This is a season, this is a moment. I open up my spirit to access something from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job 42 verse 5. I'm teaching on encounters. Encounters. Job 42 and verse 5. There is a strong spirit. The Lord is showing me four people. And the Lord is telling me the spirit of intercession is coming on those four people. 
four people now um we i pray that we'll finish on time so that we'll have the time to minister but when someone is under the anointing close to you you just help and guide them but these four people i just saw a wind four people four there is an unction it's a grace for intercession you will have the grace to travel like Anna the prophetess you will stand in the temple and pray until you bet supernatural realities I'm going to teach I'm going to teach but I'm seeing the number six and I'm seeing chains on the feet of people being broken right now there is an anointing help them please six in the spirit this is what I see chains chains in the name of Jesus I come with this grace and I declare that those chains I don't care how long they have been I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare chains be broken be broken be broken be broken please sit down help that woman please madam the spirit of death over your life I rebuke it that woman you are holding I rebuke the spirit of death over you and your family help those outside Job 42 let's see where we can stop for tonight Shalabaruskiada. someone is going to begin to pray in tongues very loud shouting is the spirit of prayer right now as I'm speaking please just allow me I hope I'm not messing up my teaching session but it's just the Holy Spirit moving when you pray and fast and prepare God responds God is not a theological reality he is alive so this is what God is telling me it's going to be a loud shout in the spirit the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous you are drinking of this grace that will turn you into a sign and turn you into a wonder you have put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God many will see and fear and put their trust in you Job 42 from verse 5 I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. I have heard of you as a theological topic. I have heard a man of God preach about you. But now my eyes, my eyes, I've heard of you like a story I had fathers of faith said you were a healer. I had them say once upon a time you moved. I heard that once upon a time people prophesied in your name. It was just like a theological story. But now, my eyes, I am having an experience of the things that I was told happened. That once upon a time God moved in many families. He moved in many territories. He moved in many places. And those who experienced this archived those stories, but as history. And they told us that God moved. 
they told us that once upon a time his outreach power was seen they told us once upon a time people got up from wheelchairs they told us once upon a time the dead came back to life but let me tell you this you do not build conviction just on history you must pass the realm and the gate of history to a realm of encounter job said i have heard about you with the hearing of the ear but now my eyes have seen you encounters john chapter 4 very quickly from verse 39 the bible talks about a woman the bible calls her a samaritan woman that this woman would come to jesus by the well and then they began a conversation and discerning he was a prophet she started asking him on aspects of worship and jesus said the hour is coming when they that worship him was worshiping spirit and truth then verse 39 the bible says she went please give it to us it says and many of the samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman out of the depth of her encounter nobody asked her to preach the fact that we have to push people to preach is a sign that they are not moving from the point of conviction it is impossible to be convicted about a spiritual reality and be silent about it there were people in scripture who jesus himself pleaded with them to be quiet the impact was too much for them to be quiet the bible says this woman now on meeting jesus she went to the city notice that every time they had an encounter did not they didn't go to people they went to cities the madman in gadara went to the end a decapolis 40 and many of the samaritans and so when the samaritans were come unto him now listen she invited them they came based on her invitation with all kinds of doubts and fears and vacillations of opinions but when the samaritans were come unto him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days 41 and many more believed because of his own word so number one they believed because of her testimony number two they believed because of his teaching now they had sat down with him and he was mentoring them they were validating the things that she told him 42 and said unto the woman listen to their testimony now this is the third level now we believe not because of your saying madam for we have heard him ourselves and we know that this indeed is the christ the savior of the world when we were coming we were not sure of who and what we were coming to meet but because your impact was so strong we know you we know your past now we see that you suddenly were transformed who did this we need to come and meet him so we came not because we were interested in that god we came because we wanted to see who made this kind of impact in your life and then step two we sat down in his meeting and in his conference and on hearing him teach we stepped into the next level believing because of our encounter this has nothing to, even if you change it's too late for us to follow you again we have met him ourselves it is dangerous to follow the god of another person and remain as the god of another person you can start with the god of abraham isaac and jacob but eventually you must give him a name that comes out of your experience with him that is the name that will preserve you are we blessed encounters are experiences supernatural experiences they don't necessarily have to be visionary experiences but they are supernatural experiences that make spiritual realities true to us now listen the faith life is such that it cannot be carnally discerned you must understand this 
the the spirit work and the faith life is not science it's not sociology it may borrow elements and aspects of these dimensions but it's higher and greater than it the bible itself tells us that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit why because they are spiritually discerned so when you come into the faith life the way you learn academically speaking the way you learn sociologically speaking may be useful but it may be very limited you will need to access a dimension higher than that realm to understand spiritual things because the the way spiritual things are communicated in many ways they insult the scope of human thinking are we together why will a man hang on a tree claiming to be blameless and by so doing save the world it does not make sense in the physical realm so you have to rise higher than that realm to understand that there are spiritual laws encounters listen to me encounters create conviction the assignment of encounters is to create conviction the certainty of god the certainty of these spiritual laws let me tell you this every time you find out that there are vacillations and inconsistencies in your spiritual work the diagnosis is that your conviction is not yet strong the apostles of the lamb and the fathers of faith who represented the early church you know why many of them could die they could die because they had conviction terrorists today die because they have conviction it is not the truthfulness of what you are saying that moves you it is the reality of it to you i can believe a lie and believe it so strong i am willing to die that's why when jesus found people with conviction it didn't matter whether the information was correct or not he had respect for them conviction so today i believe that god prospers but then under a certain condition i begin to doubt when you read your bible you will see that even the man who ordained jesus into ministry eventually doubted who he ordained john who was in the wilderness eating locust and wild honey jesus came and by the prophetic he saw and said behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world jesus said for him to baptize him and he said no 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 i'm not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus said suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a principle that scripture might be fulfilled now under a situation of gross backsliding and offense john sent the disciples and said go and tell jesus are you really the messiah are you the one to come or should we expect another so just because you think you believe what you believe now you will be surprised that 10 years down the line you will be the one fighting the exact thing you believe there are people today who do not believe in restoration because they fasted for years and said god if you are a restorer restore me and it did not happen you see prolonged pain is dangerous because it can force you to create a theology about god you will bend through the lens of your pain and come up with a viewpoint about god and if help does not come fast you will make a doctrine out of your pain and your limitation about god there are people today when we say god can favor people they hate that word because it reminds them of an experience of their waiting for that dimension that did not happen there are people today when we say god heals they feel angry and sad maybe because something happened to them and they trusted god that rafa dimension refused to show up that is why it is important to bring jesus to the scene here and now otherwise a generation will just become historians and no longer christians they would carry a historic book called the bible and now begin to talk to children and you see the generation of our parents respectfully speaking were a generation of loyalty even if they didn't believe you they will respect you but this our arrogant generation is a generation of proofs and science they will ask you questions they will not believe for nothing you said jesus heals here is someone on a wheelchair bring your jesus there you said jesus prospers here is my house rent is expiring within 24 hours they, they need that manifestation of the grace and the power of god 
and if we want to redeem a people and preserve a generation we must not only advocate the things that are true we must sustain the grace to defend them and the name given to that system is an encounter an encounter creates unbendable conviction you are willing to live and to die for that truth are we blessed so someone prays in tongues today and by next week he's not even sure of what he's doing again someone is saved today and by next week he doesn't he's he, he's he's not even sure whether christianity is is, is is a faith life that is worth his journey someone believes in walking in integrity today no no i will not pay my way out of this and that and two weeks later he's not sure again but i know whom i have believed are we blessed we're discussing encounters so that you are convicted so that you are strengthened luke chapter one let's look at something that dr luke began to speak about luke chapter one For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are what? Most surely believed among us. Not just believed, but most surely believed. Verse 2. It says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were what? Help me. Eyewitnesses and ministers of the word three we're reading to four it seemed good to me having had perfect understanding perfect understanding on the strength of being an eyewitness i was not just a a a benef a benefactor of history i was there i saw it it says having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theophilus why verse 4 read with me if you can see it that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed so i don't just want you to respectfully receive it because you respect me i want you to know the certainty of those things so that when i am no longer there you will not leave with my departure your faith will stand the disciples walked with jesus for a long time and you would think just because they were close to jesus they were really convicted they were there for different reasons pursuing their various agenda and when jesus now began to talk of departing they were angry because it looked like they had wasted three years of their lives and destiny and he said i know what you are looking for you are you don't yet have that conviction in fact here's what he told peter he said peter satan had desired to sift you like wheat but he said i have prayed for you and he says when you are converted strengthen your brethren because satan will also come to sift them like wheat encounters are powerful it brings reality it brings conviction in exodus chapter 3 we may not have the time to go through it the bible tells us about this young hebrew hedonistic person who was already on his training to become the next pharaoh of egypt and then he ran away because he killed an egyptian and he ran for his life and here he was tending the sheep of his father-in-law are we together this was the man who would become the deliverer but imagine if god just told him go and meet pharaoh moses would have died like a bird died like a chicken you don't stand before pharaoh just like that there is something you must have seen and heard you see the adversities that we confront are not just scientific you will have to come based on the strength of conviction that gives you the staying power to remain otherwise you will faint and you will bend and you will run away from battle and the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small are we still together so moses was tending his father-in-law's sheep and then the bible says he saw a bush that began to burn and yet not consumed 
it's amazing how god lures people into encounters he will expose you to something that dumbfounds your philosophy something will just happen in your life that will force you to not sleep in the night you will get up and think and say but i saw this i saw this then he says moses take off thy shoes for where thou standest is holy ground then began the conversation between the god of the hebrews and moses at the end of that conversation he said moses i want to send you to pharaoh and moses said who will i tell pharaoh send me you didn't tell me your name the name of a man encapsulates his ability so he's saying god reveal to me the extent of your power i know a bit about the witchcraft in egypt I know the gods that they have there and I've, I've seen them. I was trained in the way of the Egyptians. I'm not ignorant about what their gods can do. What is your name? Give me an identity. Give me something that strengthens me. That no matter how Pharaoh roars like a beast, I will not chicken away. And God says, I am that I am. What a name. Go and tell Pharaoh, you met a God who is not, who is not limited. I am that I am. He says, tell Pharaoh, I am had sent you. When Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go, Pharaoh laughed. You would think Pharaoh say, wow, who is that God? I respect him. If there is one attribute about Satan that is what emulating is that he has a dogged resilience. You must come up with a system of resistance for him to flee. He's not going to flee just because the Bible tells you you are victorious. No. Resist the devil and he will flee. So you need encounters. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible talks about Saul who would later become Paul, the apostle that would write to third of the New Testament. The Bible says as, as a scribe and a Pharisee, this guy would obtain letters from the priest and go and persecute Christians. And he believed by so doing that he was doing God's service. And then while on his way to Damascus, the Bible records that he had an encounter. The other disciples... Uh, with him and their and 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 those who were with him just knew that there was a sound but he saw what the bible called the light and he heard a voice from the light saul saul why persecutest thou me and he said you cannot kick against the pricks he said who are you lord notice that every time people encountered god they asked him about him the fact that we are not asking means that there is something about him we have not found because you will need to ask who are you he said that but I, that I may know him. It was the psalmist that said, Oh Lord, you are my God. I think 63. Psalm 63 or so. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. My heart thirsts for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. It says to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. This was the cry of a man who desired to know God. Saul would later become Paul with a depth of persuasion and he was willing to die and would make audacious statements for, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You don't speak like that without conviction. Our generation knows how to live but we don't know how to die for the things we believe because we lack conviction and the christianity that will last is one that you will both be able to live and die for the truth you believe it is true are we together conviction apostle god is calling me into the healing ministry do you believe in healing i think i do i read papa Hagen's book wonderful you're reading history you need an encounter you, when you stand before a wheelchair i assure you he's not going to have the patience to hear you read papa higgins books so you read because scriptures should lead you into an experience is it not in your bible he said ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life he said the scriptures testify of me that means the scriptures are signposts they should cultivate a hunger and lead you to want to know a person it should not just end in letters it should cultivate and spur a hunger in you
you can know about god by reading but you know him by an encounter are we blessed i want to share very briefly the dimensions of encounters that we will need in our lives to be effective as christians to be effective as ministers and to be effective as kingdom ambassadors god is counting on us even in this end time to be able to be promoters of his interest and it's not just going to happen just by desire or zeal we will need solid encounters that will help us frontier the the course of the kingdom within our territories and the lord revealed this to me that there are four levels of encounters please listen carefully we are going to pray it's safe to say tonight is a prayer meeting so you can see this just as a charge to just warm up our spirit so that we pray a bit four levels of encounter there is no christian and believe me i say this by the authority of god's word no believer in christ will ever be effective as far as representing the purposes of the kingdom is concerned if you do not pass through these four levels of encounters they represent the boundaries of spiritual growth you must have these encounters it is non-negotiable if you intend to live for god and if you intend to access the grace that empowers you to represent his purposes are we together number one the first level of encounter that we need is an encounter with jesus the son of god please write it down an encounter with jesus the son of god John 17 and verse 3 Jesus is praying now and he said this is eternal life he lifted up his eyes to pray John 17 and verse 3 that this is life eternal his own definition that they may know thee the one and true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent so eternal life starts with your confession on stage but it is a journey a journey and unfolding it is not just receiving the life of god and stopping there it is a journey of exploring the riches of the person christ the first encounter in order of priority that you must have if you want to last and if you want your christianity to be solid is an encounter with jesus the son of the living god first john chapter 5 please give us from verse 11 and 12 first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 it says this is the record that god hath given us eternal life eternal life it says and this life is in his son verse 12 so that he that hath the son now watch this the bible says the life of god what we call zoe cannot be received outside of jesus christ that jesus is the custodian of that life so to check whether you really have his life we must check whether you have met him he said that the character of that life is such that you cannot receive it outside of a relationship with jesus that that life is in his son so that he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son does not have life if i put some money in my pocket and you ever claim that that money is in your hand it means you would have at least met me and even gone that far to reach into my pocket is that true you cannot claim to have what is in my pocket and you've not had any contact with me so the bible says that life is not something you pick independent of jesus now you have to understand that there are different levels and kinds of life i hope you know that there is a biological life given to everyone there is life that is activated by your fraternity with demon spirits is higher than the biological life but it's not the life of god it can give you an advantage you can conjure sorcery and witchcraft and live a quality of life that is higher than a natural person 
and yet it is not the life of god you can live a life that is sponsored by by the wealth of intellectual prowess you are intelligent you have on explored the principles of life it will give you a quality of living that is higher than the natural person and yet that is not the life of god so there are different kinds and different levels of life and the bible says so that you do not mistake in them if it is the life of god you are talking about then you must have met the son whosoever has not met the son even if you have been in church you do not have his life are we blessed john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus was teaching and he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and then to destroy but he said i am come this is why i have come now that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly you can have listen it's one thing to have life but it's another thing to have more abundant life they all receive harvest some 30 fold some 60 fold some 100 fold it's all harvest but the quality of it so two believers can be in the kingdom born again and their christian experience can be so different you will wonder if it's different gods that are ministering the faith life to them because one may have life another one may have more abundant life it was a lot of the harvest that gave all of them harvest but some 30 fold some 60 fold some 100 fold it was not the seed it was the soil that was the determinant of the extent of the harvest is god helping us an encounter with the life of god john chapter 3 and verse 16 popular scripture it said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten now theologically speaking you know that he's no longer the only begotten he was the only begotten as at the time of the of his dying but now he's the firstborn among we the begotten because he has grafted and called us the many sons now into glory right so it's not just the only begotten that whosoever believes in him should not perish he says but have life everlasting this is the gospel of salvation you need an encounter with jesus the son of god if you do not know this the appetite and the strength for evangelism will not be there even if you are an evangelist why do i need to reach someone and talk to him about jesus it's more than just trying to get him to escape from hell that is very important the eternal security of his destiny is important but also the quality of his living while he's here on earth if he's to access the life of god then it has to be through jesus the son of god now please look at me jesus is not an archangel jesus is not even an angel are we together now jesus is not a man he became a man if you say jesus is a man that means someone created him he became a man means he brought himself to be a man are you getting my point now yes jesus the bible tells us the logos of god the word of god he became a man for the sake of men are we together and i've shared it again and again why he went to heaven in his body he went to heaven as a man so that he can come back because if if he went as a spirit he would need to look for a body to come back but the angel said this jesus you have seen he will return there is a law called the law of territory you cannot operate in this realm whether you any kind of spirit including god you must have a body that escorts you here so the word became flesh so that it would dwell among us then we beheld his glory so he went back bodily so that he can return now it is going with his body that assures us that is not a scam that is coming back The assurance of salvation is that he was justified in the flesh that's why the bible calls it the mystery of godliness that god became a man and today he's seated at the right hand of the father not as a spirit with the same body he used on earth so we know that he can return back because there's no hindrance to his coming the condition for his returning is that you have a body and he has that body and that is also why he can still act on earth because he still has a body called the church 
is the body of Christ so he can still use that body to walk are we blessed an encounter with the son of God when people are not saved and they don't take Jesus serious when our family members are not saved and they don't take Jesus serious it's not just it's not just the issue of evangelism alone it is death it is death both here in this life and outside of that life you will say oh apostle but they are rich let me tell you there is a vacuum that God created in man that only his size can feel money cannot feel it education cannot feel it I've had the privilege to be around a few successful people and I can tell you regardless of all of those physical things there is a peace that only God he said peace I give you my peace there is the type you can get when you build a house congratulations there is a type you can get when you go to school there is a type you can get when you have children but there is a kind of peace only God gives he said my peace I give to you not as the world gives anyone who claims to have that peace without jesus is lying my highest definition of success is peace more than progress more than achievements peace there are many people today who will pile up their achievements like a rubble and set it on fire in search for peace the peace of god is a gift you can sit in the midst of storms and laugh by an agency ordinary human beings cannot explain he said the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of one of the proofs that you have met the son is peace that is peace in your heart you see this this running around that people do around life hey, hey there is nothing that is truly an emergency when you have the peace of god because you are assured that even in life and in death you are victorious but you see many times when we save people we miss the peace part i know you are saved not just that i check i cannot see that righteousness it's a gift and it's spiritual but i can see the peace of god in you peace is not carelessness he makes me to lie down in green pastures because you are already crucified with christ and it is appointed for men to die once and if you are you are dead once already the devil will not trouble you again the peace of god that surpasses all understanding is is in a realm that is higher than understanding so someone looks at you and says you are stupid because the peace of God is in you it secures you. you you are not looking to prove a point to say look I, I will show you I'm no 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 that is that is the life of one who does not have the Sun the security that that peace gives you gives you rest just to let you know that your salary will not come this month and that trouble wants to come and the peace of God says go to bed if God is awake and you are awake who is leading who if he's awake sleep he is called the keeper not just the owner of israel the keeper of israel that's a language of responsibility everybody say i have peace prophesy to every trouble say i have peace for god's sake there are people who continue to die did you know i say it humorously sir you know bp and high blood pressure used to be something for people maybe in their 50s or 60s but now you see someone 2021 20, having high blood pressure because there is a manipulation satan is manipulating this system and robbing us of the value of peace we give up our peace in a heartbeat searching for mundane things let me tell you if you have ever asked what do i have that a non-believer does not have if it's a house you lied if it's education you lied let me tell you one thing that they do not have the peace of god that surpasses all understanding so you walk out of this place today feeling happy knowing that i may not have all the money in the world but i have peace the peace of god and peace with god there are two different things i have peace with god that i know that if my life evaporates from this realm it's only a door that opens to a place of rest 
according to the authority of scripture so i am not i i do not move as though i do not have a future and a destiny no i serve these purposes and if for any reason i exit this life you tell people don't weep like those who do not have hope because to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord peace many believers do not have peace i tell you this many people do not have peace lack of peace has broken marriages and they think the cause is, is the spouse they are looking for something neither of them can give themselves it's only the prince of peace that can give that and this life is in his son is god helping us tonight that whosoever had the son had that life if, if if we stop here tonight you have learned something that you can walk out of this place with peace you can stand and the bills are staring at you you can stand and the sickness they say there is something yes you will trust god for healing but not by worrying there is peace that i know that the worst of it is still victory for me Oh, believers we need to grow up there is what the world cannot give the world can give you land the world can give you permission to build the world can give you secular education hear me the world can give you promotion they can give you awards but there is one thing that no market can sell there is one thing that no bank can keep there is one thing that no security system can guard it's called the peace of god administered by the prince of peace himself will never find me by the grace of God Almighty putting my hand on my chin and saying life oh no oh no I already know the worst that can happen to men is called death and the Bible says oh death where is your sting do you know what that means hold on do you know what that means that like like the like the sting of a of a what they call that of a scorpion you see that now it has lost its power because death is two things one it can be doom for someone or number two it can be an entrance a door that leads to another realm they are all called death it is within your power to choose which one by that death i, I don't just mean cessation of life i mean transition to another reality they are all called death please find peace tonight we worry too much we have given the devil plans where is my child now what what if they destroy him what uh, uh, the keeper of israel that child is only alone to you no matter how responsible you are there, there are limits to which you can you learn to rest enter your sabbath my soul find rest Lord, I know that I need my child's school fees tomorrow. Otherwise, I will be in trouble. And I, it's human to be afraid and to think. But later on, just remember, hey, I'm a Christian. I'm not irresponsible. If you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. Lord, I rest in the conviction that you are Abba. My source, my sustainer, and my defender. Let your jealousy vindicate me. Even within this time. Let me tell you this the bible says stand still and then you will know there is an information about god that only being still brings stand still and you will know that i am god if you can't be still you will not see that dimension stand still i know the rent issue is before you but stand still ladies and gentlemen i am not stupid i'm a human being too i know that sometimes it's difficult to stand still before certain things the medical report the issue the backlash from your family members have not seen the benefit of your christianity you are just praying vigils upon vigils you've been praying for vigils vigils no child no husband no wife no this no money and sometimes you feel stupid for being a child of god but i bring you good news the prince of peace is still on the throne and let me tell you he knows how to administer that peace 
the peace of God is not just emotional comfort is that he resolves all the things that must make sure the turbulence in your mind goes away so that you can have true rest are we blessed an encounter with the son of God and within the few minutes I have left somewhere along in this service I will be making an altar call that there are people who really need to know the son I don't care whether you've been around church you've been around no 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 listen let me tell you we must take the issue of the salvation of souls very seriously it's not just to ease the guilt of feeling like you are not serious with your Christian life our passion must move past that realm it must desire that people have this peace the peace of God and peace with God I have peace with God I have peace with God that God is not mad at me I have peace with God ah God does the no 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 all that one is stories peace with God peace with God peace with God and then the peace of God at work in your life you can look at the things that should make you angry and just smile and they say are you all right you mean it your car was stolen and people say we ran and came because we suspected you faint I said no 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 faint is too far I understand your sense of responsibility but I have peace you mean you are sleeping yes sir why because a man can receive nothing except it is given to him please learn to find rest and find peace so what do we have as a result of our encounter with the son of god quickly let me finish number one you know we're just in number one the first thing that you receive with your encounter with jesus is in romans 5 17 is called access to righteousness this is the first thing that you receive as a result of your encounter when you truly encounter the son you receive the gift of righteousness right standing before god that's the foundation for peace knowing that that which creates a divide between you and jesus christ has been taken away that barrier has been taken away if by one man's offense the bible says death reigned by one much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by jesus take it higher for me elijah that i want to sing that song that says i'm no longer a slave to fear please you need to cast fear cast fear cast fear cast fear from your mind cast fear from your life i have the righteousness of god right standing with god that he loves me are we together now romans 5 17 and then number two very quickly what do you have as a result of your encounter with jesus the son of god you have the life of god so way the life of god according to first john 5 11 and 12 i'm being very simple so that we can have something down so the righteousness of god gives you room to have the life of god the righteousness of god comes as a result of your being justified by faith the bible says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law it says being made a cause for us for it is written is a law that has been written that cost is everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessing of abraham the blessing of abraham is not cars and houses the blessing of abraham is justification by faith the blessing of abraham would come upon we the gentiles comma to the end that we receive the promise of the spirit through faith so justified by his blood i have peace with god oh your village people were idol worshippers i know they ate human beings i know but right now i have made peace with god through the blood of the eternal covenant this is very powerful righteousness gives you access to the life of god and then number three what do you receive as a result of your encounter with jesus christ you have access to the spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places the peace of god being chiefest of them ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 paul is teaching now thanks be to god the father of our lord jesus christ he says 
who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ so in Christ I have access to those spiritual blessings that's what we call grace the grace of God is not just unmerited access uh -uh. that's just a dimension of the workings of that grace the grace of God represents the entire scope of everything that makes God God his peace is grace his wisdom is grace are we together his power is grace anointing is grace his mercy is grace every good and perfect gift that comes from above through Christ to men is called grace let's take one more before we close for tonight is that fine the second encounter that we need Is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit this is the second encounter that you will need for an effective Christian life in that order an encounter with Jesus the Son of God and now an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 please look up now theologically speaking and as revealed from Scripture doctrinally speaking too the holy spirit is responsible for the conviction of sinners are we together now the holy spirit is the transporter of the life of god he aids men to encounter jesus but there is a unique and separate encounter with the holy spirit that is independent of the initial encounter with the son of god you have to understand this in as much as he is the facilitator of the life you received there is an encounter with the office and the person of the holy spirit zechariah 4 and verse 6 i'm no longer a slave to fear i am a child That I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Please give it to us, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. And he answered and said unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord to Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, not by power. But by my spirit saith an angel saith the Lord the Lord is telling you I am here as the Lord but you still need my spirit it is the Lord that is talking about his spirit but by my spirit there are dimensions of possibilities that when you see in this earth realm it is not sponsored by the might of men it is not sponsored by the power of men it is an attestation to an encounter that you have had with the Holy Ghost please listen please listen you have to listen to what I have to share within the few minutes and then we'll pray in John chapter 14 John 14 John chapter 14 from verse 16 Jesus is teaching and he said I will pray the father and he will give you another comforter are we together now that he may abide with you forever we're reading to 18 even the spirit of truth that's what he's called Jesus is teaching about the Holy Spirit now whom the world cannot receive why can't they receive two reasons number one because it seeth him not that means the character of that relationship is such that your physical eyes may not be necessary he's giving you that information social media has taught us that you can have friends you have not seen physically so they have helped us to understand the possibility of a healthy relationship with the holy spirit even though your optical eyes may not see him it says neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you jesus is teaching about the holy spirit 
and then when you get to chapter 16 he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth jesus is introducing us to the ministry of the holy spirit and he's saying he will come and guide the believer not pastors not pentecostals no not tongue talkers that the ministry of the holy spirit is for every believer micah chapter 3 and verse 8 last scripture micah chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord so the holy spirit is responsible for guidance the holy spirit is responsible for direction the holy spirit creates a platform for fellowship and the holy spirit creates a platform for empowerment all of these possibilities only happen when you encounter the person and the office of the holy spirit you may have the life of god in your encounter with the son of god and never access these possibilities you need this level of encounter with the holy spirit unfortunately many believers have not been taught about the relevance and the importance of the holy spirit for most people they think the holy spirit is for men who are interested in prayer or interested in fasting or if at any point you sense there is the call of god upon your life the moment you just want to live a sociological life you feel the holy spirit is not relevant at all the holy spirit's relevance cuts across every strata of our activities he has value always spiritual value intellectual value financial value value in terms of influence value in terms of relevance value in terms of no matter you you cannot mention an aspect of life where the holy spirit is not needed we have ignored him to our peril we have left him only for pastors and left him for people who are working in the healing ministry or those who want to pray in tongues as we say no write this down there are four major responsibilities of the holy spirit in the life of the believer very quickly number one he is the revealer of the word let me give you scriptures for this very quickly first corinthians 2 from verse 9 to 12 the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man what god has prepared for them that love him verse 10 it says but god has revealed them revealed them how by his spirit for the spirit such at all things yea the deep things of god and then the bible says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god ah that means if you ever find me giving you an information that i could not access in god it had to be the spirit of god who brought it the holy ghost is the revealer of the mysteries of the kingdom listen let me tell you this brothers and sisters the holy spirit can hold you and open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom and turn your life to a sign and a wonder regardless your background regardless the limitations this is very true he's the one who has made this life that you see today the spirit of god he can turn you literally into a provable sign and wonder now i understand what great people like catherine coleman and all these people would cry and sob for hours and say he's my best friend do not let him depart from me don't grieve him it looked like they were just being emotional you see many things about christianity looks fake until you really encounter those dimensions take your place take your place you are the holy ghost the holy ghost you are the holy ghost the holy ghost take your place Take your place. What is the relevance of the Holy Spirit? He is the confirmer of the word. 
listen very carefully the word is a barren piece of paper without his presence he gives life and he proves the validity of what you study it is the holy spirit that makes the word come alive otherwise you are just reading history you are reading a book produced by zondervan or white taker house you are just reading a piece of historic material it is the holy spirit that brings life the quickener of the word the bible says write it down please the bible says in isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26 please media help us let's just rush our time is up isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26 thus said the lord thy redeemer he that formed thee from the womb and so on and so forth go to 25 that frustrated the tokens of liars and makers diviners mad he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish now 26 that confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers is one thing to speak and just speak empty words but the holy ghost is that force the invisible but real force you see the only way to understand your relationship with the holy ghost is to understand marriage Huh? to understand marriage when two people are getting married notice what happens the man is standing this way are we together many of you are smiling now what a good example i just mentioned the issue of marriage and then the wife is standing there now watch this they don't even know how the journey is going to be the man is smart with his necktie or bow tie the friends are there cheering him and the lady is standing looking gorgeous her 15 year old dream 16 year old dream finally coming to pass and they ask a question listen now do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife etc etc he doesn't even listen he says yes i will are we together and they ask her the same question and she says yes watch this then they join them together and they say therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and two of them become what one flesh theologically is a cop is a concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one is the mystery of what we call the salt covenant that means everybody brings their salt and you put it together and the condition for separation is if everybody can pick their salt out so you and the holy ghost I hope you know the church is called the bride of christ so there is a marriage that really happens that you stand and the, the husband listen any responsible man's assignment is to make sure that his wife feels loved and is comfortable remember the assignment of men is to love their wives and the assignment of the bride is to honor her husband are we bible students so every man is a woman in the spirit so when you see me stand here i'm standing like a faithful bride that husband must be there to confirm that our marriage is still in place so listen if if a man is a ceo and is a multi-millionaire and even if he didn't discuss with his wife and she comes to say well on behalf of my husband i donate 1000 shares for the sake of his love for her they can argue it later on but you will have to back and redeem that pledge because that man if he cannot cater for his wife he has shown irresponsibility are we together now every marriage that is healthy must see the signature of the husband on the woman is that true so when the signs and the wonders and the manifestations of heaven happen through a mortal man it is that husband showing that the union is still strong He's showing that you are like it is unfortunately in this union it is the wife that you see you don't see the husband but he is there jealously there and the bible said jealousy is the rage of a man so when you speak you put in pressure on the integrity of that husband in the name of jesus be lifted and then that husband swings to action now it looks like you are using him but he said wives oh no you see so when people are clapping for you any responsible wife will say thank my husband madam your soup is nice madam your soup is this and a wise and responsible woman will know that i am an usher
Vashti made that mistake she forgot that she was only queen because she married the king and when she created an empire for herself Ahasuerus moved her away Esther was about to make that mistake but Mordecai standing in the place of the Holy Spirit warned her and said don't forget a vacancy was created before you came and she met the king and the king lifted his golden censer and said what would I do for you and she didn't ask anything for herself she said oh king I want to organize a ceremony for you I want to flaunt your glory and the king said this is what Vashti failed to do so if I be lifted up from the earth not you not your agenda not your ministry so when we worship him we're like a faithful wife putting pressure on our husband when we give him the glory when men clap for us and make it look as if all that happens is a fabrication of our intelligence we are wise enough to understand that we are faithful brides and we direct them like ushers to that spirit of god who represents the presence of jesus to us and god said you did this for me you had the opportunity to enjoy the stage light but you turned men to me let's go another level of miracles another level of signs and wonders listen I hope you know that marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman a man is a dimension of God a woman is a dimension of God God separated two of them to act out the highest dimension of relationship marriage is supposed to be the closest way to know God and so he doubled that while doing that there's an opportunity for procreation and advancing and filling the earth and subduing it a woman is a dimension of God a man is a dimension of God as two of them relate the first revelation of Jesus that should be seen by children is in their parents so whether the children look at the husband or the wife they are still seeing dimensions of God they should learn God before they get to Sunday school you see when we grow in intimacy with the holy spirit again is akin to marriage do you know when a man is married with his wife they have through intimacy learned various ways of communicating that you will be surprised a stranger cannot know it you can be a visitor in their midst and they are talking and yet you cannot hear because through that relationship they have developed codes that mean get minerals for him and yet you don't hear the mouth speaking so to really know how the Holy Spirit operates you cannot know him theologically that marriage must happen it is while you are working with the Holy Ghost one time he will now teach you that every time you go to minister that fire you feel this is what it means you can not create a doctrine out of it it's a personalized dealing you need to you as a testament of your relationship what that fire may mean to me may mean different to someone else that's why creating doctrines out of experiences Will mislead the body there is a way he has trained me to know what anointing is in a place there is a way he has trained me to know what angel is in a place these are not things that can be taught I can only create the portal for his presence to come and leave you there with him it's a relationship you will have to develop it's like driving I can show you everything but eventually as you start driving there are you develop a chemistry with that car the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing I'm introducing you to a personality you have neglected I'm introducing you to a real relationship a provable relationship brothers and sisters let me tell you if many of you have created a box for your jewelries many of you have garages for your car show me where you have created for him many of you have created you guard your atm with such jealousy oh let it not get missing the whole house will go on fire but where have you kept for him and you see the holy spirit is so gentle he will not intrude because he's not a demon he will stand even if it is for 30 years and just watch you with the compassion of the father dear businessman have you been taught that if you introduce him to the equation of your business that it can change things 
or have you just listened to videos that have just taught world from a scientific point do you know the holy spirit is, a, is the advantage have you introduced him to your home look at my life many times i look and i say spirit of god oh that these people will know that you are the force behind the things they celebrate that if there is anything worth celebrating in the life of this man let me tell you the man you are seeing before you is only a puppet you need to see the force that is behind like a faithful bride to her husband so when you see me coming here you think a man just walked in but you have not seen the other one husbands love your wives it is on the strength of that jealousy that we boast every woman's confidence is in the love of her husband so when you are aware what gives the audacity to speak to someone and say by tomorrow your life will change who gave you that audacity i tell you where it comes from it comes from the confidence of your oneness that the one that married you so happens to be an infinite a represent paul called him the great power of god can we pray our time is gone listen many situations in our lives have not changed because we are not ready to take the holy spirit serious the holy spirit is more than tongues please hear me the holy spirit is more than ministry mm. do you know that certain people in life can be blessed for the sake of others is there any man in the house of Saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake do you know many things can happen in your life for the sake of the holy spirit or on account of him he is the force that makes that favor upon you speak that someone sees you and say i just like this person no nobody just likes this person there is a force behind it it's time to take your life and your relationship with him serious for many of you you started well with him but i don't know what happened on the way you just left him because ministry started working well some of you left him because you entered a physical relationship the day you married you waved him goodbye instead of telling your husband before you came there was one no hmm. i would give up ministry a thousand times to preserve his presence a thousand times i would drop this mic without thinking about it take your place we're praying take your place it's not a special number take your place listen just two prayer points and we're done i apologize for the time prayer point number one spirit of the living god take me on this journey i'm tired of acting a christianity that i cannot prove i submit to you sincerely is someone praying jesus gave him an as an advantage to us as an advantage to us please pray please pray man of god pray i do not doubt the call of god upon your life i know that there is a hand of god upon you but you will not excel in ministry on the strength of the flesh i know he's called you into business i know he's called you to be an influential person take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit Take your place. Take your place. Ah. The quickener. The one who guides. 
the one who turns ordinary men to signs and wonders the spirit of truth the spirit of grace the spirit of god the representation of the presence of god hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer there is one thing i know about god there is nothing that attracts the presence of god to a man like total surrender and brokenness let me tell you this more than prayer more than fasting more than vigils in my experience with god and as proven from scripture the greatest magnet to the attention of god is a broken and a contrite heart you can pray you can fast you can attend vigils but i tell you this you want to draw the attention of god there is a position a heart that says lord i'm completely open we are going to cry for a few minutes in this place listen to me i don't care whether you're a man of god i don't care whether you're a pastor uh -uh. you are going to take off your golden crown and join the elders you are going to say lord purge me my heart is open there is an experience i seek for there is a dimension of reality if you are ashamed to cry before god you are not serious believe me believe me believe me lift your voice cry before your maker outside make sure you are praying few minutes and we're done I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before keep praying your royal majesty I truly cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your royal majesty Yabone nakao Sujata de nakao Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana Yabone nakao Sujata de nakao I cry in my heart. One minute, pray. It is only when the sacrifice is upon the altar that the fire falls. The fire cannot come until there is a sacrifice upon the altar. One more minute. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I come to you, the lover of my soul. Somebody is praying. Would you dance with me, oh lover? Of my soul to the song of all songs, a new relationship. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song?
Please pray. I apologize, but let, let that let that alabaster box break. Let it break once and for all. As you are praying, God will be calling you. For some of you, God is saying, You've neglected me. You've neglected the place of prayer and fellowship. What so distracted you? Like the prodigal son, he said, I will arise and I will go back to my father say father i have sinned against heaven and i'm not worthy to be called your son please pray to worship you i leave to worship you i leave i leave to worship you to worship you i leave to worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Oh, 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 oh. Like you to sing this Yoruba song for me. is gone but very quickly there are two categories of people that I'm going to be praying for the first there are people here who are saying apostle while you were speaking that spirit of the living God was speaking to me and saying it's time to get serious with God you may hang around church some of you were probably invited like the Samaritan woman invited those people but now the Bible says they believed him because of his word. And now you are in a position where you are ready to make Jesus Lord genuinely. Genuinely. Sincerely. And truly so. Our time is fast spent and I sincerely apologize. But like our father and the Lord will do, I'm going to count one to five. Whether you are inside or outside. I want you to just run and come and stand here. Don't kneel because of space sincerely make sure you understand what you are doing that you are saying apostle i'm ready i'm ready to completely hand over everything to jesus you can come one i have decided 
to follow Jesus. No turning back. Keep coming. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Keep coming. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Apostle, I love Jesus, but I'm ashamed of my friends. Join them apostle i i don't i don't do bad things but i'm not sure if i'm really saved join them very quickly i want to pray for you we're standing here joining faith with the fathers and we want to pray this is the record listen to me there is no reason to be ashamed it's the greatest decision anybody can make it is true this is not some christianity initiation it's a real experience that affords you the opportunity to be a partaker of the life of god hallelujah all of you who are standing i salute you young and old for this bold decision thank you for standing to make this decision for jesus i'd like you to lift your right hand high above your head if you can repeat these words not as a poem let it be from the depth of your heart i'm merely guiding you is the sincerity and the purity of your own decision that attracts the attention of god say after me lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for my justification tonight i make jesus lord of my life king of my life savior of my soul i receive eternal life and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight and forever the power of sin satan hell and the grave are broken over my life from today and forever i will serve the lord amen keep your hands lifted father i present to you the ones you died for thank you for the convicting power of the holy spirit thank you O oh god for this decision many of them are in tears coming to you to receive your life i pray that you who is the keeper of men will keep them spirit of the living god i commend you to their lives and i pray that they will enjoy the fullness of your ministry that you turn every life here to a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus now please all of you look at me there is there is a brother here and an uncle who is waving uh the, the the placard up i want all of you to just follow him quietly as we clap for them they will lead you to a room and just pray with you and you'll be back let's let's appreciate them let's celebrate them praise the lord we have to close but um i know that many of you have come desiring prayer and and all of that uh we, we cannot do that tonight i apologize let's make it tomorrow where we'll have the time to just prophesy over your life and just pray for the sick and minister i'd like you to come with your heart opened and let the lord finish what he started in your life in this conference but for tonight i pray for you in the name of jesus i decree and declare the kind of hunger for the things of god that nothing in this life can quench may that hunger come upon you i release upon you passion for spiritual things and everything that represents a distraction to your christian experience in the name of jesus i drive it far from your life everything that has mocked god in your life 
i release my faith for many of you between tonight and tomorrow i stand by the grace of god and i declare in the name of jesus you will watch that challenge disappear like smoke before the wind for many of you you will return back home and you will meet strange miracles waiting for you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the lord will bless you the lord will bless all connected to you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen wave your hands to jesus father bless our hearts this morning in the mighty name of jesus spirit of the living god unless you speak we cannot hear and so we ask in the name of jesus that your voice will be loud it will be clear grant us understanding let the entrance of your word edify us we saturate this entire atmosphere with your presence and your power we pray oh god that the spirit of wisdom and understanding will be at work in our lives within the moments that we have and i pray that burdens will be lifted in the name of jesus christ amen and amen please be seated thank you again for this opportunity it will be very brief this is the second service i began to teach yesterday night on encounters and um, we started by explaining that encounters are supernatural events that make a thing a principle or a person real the goal of encounters is to establish the reality reality of spiritual things to you to the end that you become convicted and we said that men did exploit in scripture on the strength of their encounters that encounters produce conviction and i did say yesterday that there are four levels of encounters i don't know how many of them will be able to cover in this entire conference but the first of them and in that order is the encounter with jesus the son of the living god according to first john 5 11 and 12 that he that had the son hath eternal life and i told us that encounter with jesus christ grants us access to righteousness grants us access to the life of god and grants us access to all spiritual blessings which the bible calls the grace of god praise the lord and then number two we we looked briefly at the encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit this is where we stopped and we agreed that it is not enough to just receive the life of god you need an encounter with the holy spirit isaiah 48 and verse 6 it says the lord and his spirit had sent me the lord does not send people alone isaiah 48 and verse 6 okay i'm sorry i think i may have mixed it up somewhere isaiah look for that scripture for me is it isaiah 30 let's try 30 21 if not look for it please for me the lord and his spirit try 30 and verse 21 oh you can just search it for me but it's important we see that scripture the lord and his spirit had sent me very very powerful scripture so god does not send people um alone he empowers you with the holy ghost and he sends you and i said a few things that the holy spirit provides guidance the holy spirit provides direction the holy spirit provides fellowship the holy spirit provides empowerment he is the revealer of the word he is the confirmer of the word he is the custodian of the anointing i didn't say that yesterday we stopped at the confirmation of the word the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing isaiah 48 and verse 16 sorry not 6 16 thank you isaiah 48 and 16 the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing isaiah 61 says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me that means it was not the oil that anointed oil does not anoint 
oil only anoints looks to anoint because it can attract the presence of the holy spirit the lord that anointed me and so the spirit of the lord is upon me and then he begins to list all of the things that he comes to do micah chapter 3 and verse 8 says i have power by the spirit our power is not outside of our relationship now when you go to a herbalist you don't need to have a relationship with the herbalist you don't even need to know his name you just need to tell him the problem and he will tell you what the demand is conjure some things and off you go you may not even know his name but the the faith life is so designed that the power that you get is a derivative of your relationship praise the lord so one of the benefits of working with the holy spirit is access to power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says but ye shall receive power after not before not during after that the holy ghost is come upon you and he will make you witnesses unto me the holy spirit also represents the voice of god first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith he says and they shall give heed to um the doctrine seducing spirit he says and the doctrine of demons but the speaker is the spirit and he speaks expressly the word expressly that means that the holy spirit speaks in an unmistaking way he speaks in a way that you know he's the one so if there is haziness in your hearing god the challenge is not the voice of the spirit the challenge is your level of spiritual alignment because the spirit does not just speak he speaks expressly are we together revelation chapter 2 and verse 29 the holy spirit represents the voice of god let him that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith so the spirit of god is a talking spirit he speaks he does not always speak um the idea that god is always speaking yeah maybe there but he doesn't always speak because we're created in his image and his likeness and you are not always speaking the word of the lord comes you read the bible in the fifth day of the first month of this the word of the lord came just like faith the word of the lord comes praise the lord so the ministry of the holy spirit is very important we explored it yesterday and um, let me encourage us develop a very healthy relationship with the holy spirit i'll say one more thing and then we'll go to the third encounter relationship with the holy spirit is very atmosphere dependent you will want to write this very atmosphere dependent if there is one thing i have learned working with the spirit of god is that relationship with the holy spirit is very atmosphere dependent the first proof that you are interested in a relationship with the holy spirit is the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere that is conducive for fellowship there is a way the holy spirit will relate with you that is different from the way he will relate with you corporately he is very atmosphere dependent hallelujah i said yesterday we have garages for our cars because we place value on the cars is that true we have stores for our food we have boxes for our jewelries but you must make room and make space for him you can turn anywhere in your house as a place as an altar for fellowship you can turn your toilet and your bathroom you can turn your living room you just must be ready to invest that atmosphere number two the second requirement for real intimacy with the holy spirit is the sacrifice of time if you really want to know the holy spirit you must be ready to sacrifice time and your sacrifice of time will be based on the consciousness that no time spent with him is a waste your one hour with the holy spirit can save you 10 years of wasting your time his time time with him has monetary value time with him has time redemption value are we together remember jesus was praying and relating with the holy spirit when the disciples went to the other side they were six hours ahead of him 
already you would call that delay but the moment he was done praying he got up there was no boat he started walking on water within moments he had caught up with them and they were at the the, the boat was boisterous they were about to capsize when you stay with god you run the secret to running is staying it will look like you are being delayed but one leap with his backing will cover up decades are we together now number three the third encounter if you can help just provide me a little time so that it will just guide me so we don't overshoot the third encounter is the encounter with the word of god encounter with the word of god now this is strange because you see jesus is also called the word of god but look up there is the word of god as the living logos the personality god himself but there is the word of god as the methodologies of the kingdom remember jesus said i am the way i am the truth and the life so there is jesus the way there is jesus the life are we together if you know jesus the life you are you are going to enjoy eternal life but you are not going to live a victorious life for you to find your place of relevance in destiny you must encounter jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom are we together now so an encounter with the word of god what is the word of god a compendium of the mysteries the secrets and the principles of the kingdom please pay attention so you have an encounter with jesus the son of god you have the life of god as a reward you have an encounter with the office and the person of the holy spirit the reward guidance direction fellowship empowerment now you have an encounter with the logos the word of god the word of god as a compendium of his wisdom the word of god as light that shines in darkness the word of god as the mysteries of the kingdom john 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 i apologize for just rushing the prophet began to lament in chapter 4 and verse 6 he said my people it's, it's amazing the first two words says my people although they are my people they are destroyed not because i rejected them they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge you will not be a priest you do not sustain capacity to represent me because you have no knowledge hallelujah hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible describing the christ there he says he upholds all things by the word of his power being the brightness or and the express image of god hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 3 he upholds all things by the word of his power so all things are upheld by the word ephesians 4 and verse 18 the, the apostle paul was teaching the church in ephesus and he said in verse 18 having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them that means being born again is not enough for you to maximize the potential that this life brings you must have spiritual illumination are we together now psalm 82 when you read from verse 5 to 7 psalm 82 from verse 5 it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but the tragedy is in the next verse it says you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so it takes more than just being with christ to reign on earth i think this is where um many believers this is where the unbecoming 
of many Christians are. So they say, I love Jesus Christ. I love him with all my heart. Why are things happening like this? Because your victory is predicated not just on your relationship, but your access to the principles and the methodologies of the kingdom. Listen to me. The glory of God always comes to confirm that his principles have been kept. When the patterns of God are kept, the reward for walking in keeping with God's pattern is his glory. So when the glory of God shows up in your finances, in your life, it is proof that you have kept the patterns of God in that area. Are we blessed? Encounter with the word of God. The principles of the kingdom. Second Peter chapter 1, when you read from verse 2 even to 4. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge you see that now so the grace of god is not generic no there is a grace that appears to all men that is the grace unto salvation the grace of god that makes for salvation appears unto all men but there are certain graces that don't appear unto all men it is your knowledge that lifts you otherwise all our results will be the same the bible says that the grace of god in this kingdom is predicated on your access to knowledge grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness again through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises it says that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so this is very important knowledge is very important in this kingdom you've heard me say it again and again that dominion is not an impartation there is nowhere in scripture where dominion was imparted dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways and the methodologies of the kingdom are we blessed praise the lord i think you should you should be able to hear me can you hear me okay so we'll just continue Colossians chapter 3 and verse 6 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. But here's the part of the verse many people do not see. Colossians chapter... Praise the Lord. Thank you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Are we together? The wisdom of the word is not having access to it. It's knowing how to apply it for victory. So the Bible says the word of Christ should dwell in you in all wisdom. That means having access to the information is not where the wisdom is. Knowing how to bring out the scriptures and command victory in your life is where the wisdom is. Are we together? Praise the Lord. What is the benefit of an encounter with the word? Number one, understanding. Spiritual understanding. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was admonishing the church in Colossae. And he said, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it. He's praying now. Do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with three things. Number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. Praise the Lord. So we need understanding. 
in Luke chapter 19 and verse 42 Luke chapter 19 and verse 42 it says jesus was lamenting and he says if thou hast known even thou at least in thy day the things which belong unto your peace that means the principles that allow your life to find peace he says but now they are hid from your eyes and so he did a miracle for them in same chapter 24 of luke luke 24 and verse 45 luke chapter 24 and verse 45 then opened he their understanding then open he that means access to scripture does not automatically bring understanding god must open a man's understanding that they might understand scripture when you read isaiah 29 it's a scripture that blessed me from the day i found it isaiah 29 and verse 11 no matter how educated and how literate you are when it comes to the matters of the spirit you will need the help of the holy spirit opening your understanding let's read this scripture together if you're a christian and you can see it ready one to read and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is what stop not closed sealed so the fact that you open it does not mean the seal is broken you can open your bible and yet it is still sealed the bible says which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray and he said i cannot why for it is sealed next verse he said and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i'm not even learned in the first place so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned will have to depend on the wisdom of the holy spirit to open scripture you cannot approach scripture just scientifically yes it is a book that is is has this is literature but there is an anointing and there is a grace that backs it are we together access to the word of god an encounter with the word of god produces understanding number two it produces faith romans chapter 10 and verse 17 it says faith comes by hearing hearing your access to knowledge and information is the foundation of bible faith very very important james chapter 1 let's look at from verse 5 to 8 james chapter 1 very quickly james chapter 1 from verse 5 it says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that giveth unto men liberally and upbraided not and it shall be given to him then he puts a disclaimer and a word of caution verse 6 but let him ask in faith the bible says not wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed seven we are reading to verse 8 for let that man not think now this is a very harsh statement let that man not think not imagine in his heart that he shall receive anything from the lord all and any form of reception from the lord will require faith and it is your access to the word you see that so there is an explanation to not getting things from god apostle james already told us here that if you cannot receive by faith you see the way the kingdom works is that when you believe and then you receive then you have receiving is a spiritual thing it's not physical it is having that is physical you see that you have to first receive in the realm of the spirit by faith and you don't just receive by saying i receive no you receive by walking the principles that guarantee god's commitment on that matter that's how to receive many believers make the mistake of saying i receive just by verbalizing reception that may be the first step but the bible way to receive is to find out the conditions allocated for the manifestation of that promise and then obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with that condition you have received that promise you see that so just mere confession i receive is going to flatter us and we'll keep wasting our time for nothing if god says for instance um that 
you will seek me and find me with all your heart and you desire intimacy with god you don't just say i receive intimacy i receive means that you can obtain the grace and the staying power to fellowship with the holy spirit you have received you don't receive by please hear this because god is correcting someone now you may be saying i receive i receive i receive and wonder why things are not happening you don't just receive by verbalizing reception you receive by trusting the spirit of light to open your eyes to the conditions allocated for god's commitment on that matter are we blessed faith faith what is faith i define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction about god and the integrity of his person that is faith the name given to the action not the desire not the believing the believing is not faith the believing is part of the faith equation until your action of obedience not just any action the action that is allocated to guarantee god's commitment that's faith what is the advantage the third advantage of encounter with the word of god stability write it down please i've given you three benefits of an encounter with the word of god number one spiritual understanding and that's what your dominion depends on number two faith number three stability first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 first corinthians 15 and verse 15 first corinthians 15 and yes please keep it to us 15 and 58 first corinthians 15 58 it says therefore my beloved brethren look up please be ye what steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord be steadfast that means you must get to a point of stability in your christian work where you are not just vacillating at anything why because you have been so infused with the word of god listen you know you are growing spiritually when what made you shake and fear and fidget yesterday no longer has that power over you now believers cannot be in the faith for a long time and you shake over everything you must even with natural age there is an age you get to that even if they tell you there is an arm robber you don't run again because you have gone through too many storms in life and they have created stability you are no longer afraid i remember a man who was sick many years ago and he was probably in his i think 70s approaching 80s and he had a kidney problem and they said he needs a kidney transplant and they were going to call a young man and the man told them he said forget it please i've spent my days there is no need robbing a young man of a fruitful life he said leave me alone just make the remaining days enjoyable and pleasurable let me spend time with my family if that man had that kidney problem at 18 or 20 he would be afraid but the passage of time created stability there's no longer fear this is how it is spiritually you must grow to a point where you've gone through too many things you thought would kill you but the awareness of god's mercy god's grace god's deliverance quarter to shame he came in too many times so he does not expect you to be that afraid again do you know the higher you rise in the spirit the stricter the standard of god's dealing with you that was why moses two people can commit the same offense and god will act like he didn't see what one did and come to you and say no i've invested too much in you for this kind of fear i've invested too much in your life for this kind of expectation so it's risky to be deeper with god because the more he exposes you to his light and his glory the more expectations he has from you are we together that's why he told moses he said no moses you've seen too much of my glory to disobey me this far you will not get to the promised land i mean what was there for him to just say okay moses i understand you are human these people are stubborn even me as god i've not i've been finding it hard with them but he said moses foreseeing this dimension of my glory for 90 days you were with me immersed in the glory no you've seen too much of my goodness to act this way 
so the more you are exposed to the light of god the more expectations he has the word of god are we blessed isaiah 33 and verse 6 tells us wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times wisdom knowledge bring stability there is something about god when you know you will not be afraid again there is something about satan when you know you will also not be afraid you see the strength of darkness is magnifying its power using your ignorance are we together now yes there are many nations for instance that when you study history there are many nations that sometimes have had to get up and maybe uh, fight leaders and fight certain people or even fight cultural beliefs let me use cultural beliefs there are certain people who maybe practice witchcraft or certain religions in some nations and they told them if you do this this deity will kill you and out of fear they remain subjugated one day someone just made up his mind and said you know what let me try this deity and they found out that deity was not that powerful and from that day this is what light does to you satan you know there are rulers called rulers of darkness their dominion starts everywhere there is ignorance when they find ignorance their dominion is there there is something you can know about the devil for instance satan can be tired do you know that are you aware of that that satan can literally be tired of a man who he was tired of job to a point that he went to god and said what is it about this man I've sojourned to and fro the earth have not been able to touch this man and God said the secret is that there is a hedge so whatever that hedge is that was on Job can come upon you and you will give Satan the same experience in your lifetime that he can come around you and your family members and find that mysterious hedge of protection now I don't want to create any trouble this morning this is a simple second service but do you know that satan is not the most wicked of demonic spirits <laughs> there are spirits that are more demonic they are bound in everlasting chains right now as i speak to you we are bible students just just whet your appetite to say there are things satan does not just attack remember his office in heaven was the custodian of the light of god so satan evaluates your extent of spiritual knowledge and develops a unique strategy based on your ignorance to attack you he does not just attack at random the same formula will not work for everybody so when he comes and finds light in the area of finances he won't touch you there he will be patient enough to scan your life continue to scan your life and begin to write the areas of darkness and come up with a unique formula based on the areas of ignorance and the way he does it is to blind your mind the bible says in that area so that you will make the word of god in that area unfruitful so even if they are preaching in that area that word does not profit you he builds a stronghold you know what a stronghold is a stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim in that thinking pattern because your thought patterns are doorways for both the holy spirit and demons into your life are we together so there are things when you know about satan he will not just come and buffet you with a lot of things no no when he came to eve and adam and spoke to them there were certain things they did not know when he came to jesus he said if you are the son of god turn these stones to bread but there was something jesus knew it is written not it is said not i think it is written and satan said ah so you know this next temptation it is written third temptation it is written and he left him for a season the next time he will come back he didn't come to jesus directly he came through peter he used peter's compassion and jesus looked and said no peter this is not you get 
left thee behind me satan and peter said what did i do he said you don't even know what is going on in the realm of the spirit satan has desired to use your compassion to stop me from going to the cross i have prayed for you when you are converted study your brethren he will come in that way too satan can use good attributes in your life not just demonic attributes it is not only lust and pride that kills satan can use love to kill was it not the compassion of the people that abraham went with i'm sure they would have stopped him and said no don't kill isaac it is not only evil satan uses to destroy the tree was called the tree of both knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil he can still use good to kill satan does not have to use a lie alone he can use the truth too and kill that's why the whole the bible says the holy spirit will guide you into all truth just accessing truth at random can destroy you you must be guided into it an encounter with the word of god my prayer is that god will deliver our generation from ignorance there is a lot of pride and boastful speaking shrouded in in a deep level of spiritual ignorance many things we do not know about god about satan about life about destiny and our lives and our destinies i tell you are at the mercy of this do you know even scientifically there were many things that were thought to be impossible but science today is demystifying them they were not mystery they were only mysteries based on our ignorance you see challenges you've heard me say they are not generic they depend on the level of light that you have access to two people can be in a situation one will walk at it as if satan does not exist and the other one will be trapped by it what you know matters in this kingdom so paul said ephesians 1 when you begin to read from verse 15 down to 20 he had to bow his knees praying for the church in ephesus that the spirit of wisdom and knowledge be given to them that the heart of your understanding being flooded with light he says that you may know it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints how are the saints matured not just by just doing regular activities the saints are matured on the strength of their access to light guided light there is something you can know about restoration oh god says i will restore i agree but do you know how to make it work in your life you can quote that scripture and create a theology out of your disappointment that god does not restore but there is a key that activates it do you know that god can save people from shame he says i will call upon the lord for he is worthy to be praised he says so shall i be saved from my enemies by this formula what formula calling upon the lord and then praising together so there is a mystery when you mix prayer and praise it's like ingredients that form something in the spirit paul and silas when they were in the jail they prayed and they praised and that same thing happened so so every time your enemies attack you what is the formula it is not prayer alone when you are done with prayer you switch to praise he said by that formula i am delivered from my enemies i pray every day and i say open my eyes oh god to understand your ways show me your ways show me your ways he said that will show us the path of light in your light we see light are we blessed the principles of the kingdom in matthew chapter 13 let's wrap up for this service matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching an extension of what we know to be the beatitudes and he gets to this point and he said he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven a mystery is a hidden code of operation 
that is privy to a group of people the military people have their code of operation they have the way that they speak if you are not a military man you may not understand but they have their signs of communication is that true market people have their signs of communication in the kingdom we also have our ways of working for instance when you see somebody going down and you tell the person in the name of jesus you are rising up it looks like you are lying but it is a it is a way of operating in the kingdom that when men say there is a casting down for you it's that there is a lifting up you don't say it when you see it you say it to see it an encounter with the word of god so we have an encounter with the son of the living god jesus the christ are you seeing now number two we have an encounter with the office and the person the ministry of the holy spirit notice that they have their different rewards and it's very strange that none of them will replace the other they all complement you have eternal life i agree but spiritual ignorance can kill you lack of guidance and direction will make you go around jericho indefinitely when they stood there at jericho they didn't guess their formula they would have died for nothing the captain of the host of heaven had to come and give them the formula and say go round jericho seven times the seventh time lift your shofar and sound it the victory that we desire in our spiritual life depend on these encounters depend on these encounters the encounter with the son of god your entrance into the kingdom access to righteousness the life of god access to the spiritual blessings that reside in the heavenlies your encounter with the holy spirit provides you guidance provides you direction provides you access to the voice of god access to the speakings of god provides you access to true spiritual power power that provides result remember it is divine power it is divine power that activates all things then access to the word of god the logos of god not as a person but as the methodologies of the kingdom knowing the ways of god this is about the greatest area of ignorance in the church most people have received jesus christ in fact most people have spent time fellowshipping with the holy spirit they even hear god but the imbalance in their hearing is because they have not encountered the word of god so there is a mix to what they are hearing today they are correct tomorrow they are wrong because the word of god is the jurisdiction of balance the word of god purifies your hearing the voice of god i can hear god and you see let me wrap up by saying this one minute and then we'll pray the way things happen in the realm of the spirit and the speakings of god prophetically is such that you must encounter the word of god for the speakings of god to profit you are we together because the way god speaks he speaks in similitudes he speaks through signs he speaks through tokens there are so many variations on how god speaks but all his speakings submit to the word of god so you can sieve and purify the word of god regardless the symbols i can see a ring in the realm of the spirit and that ring can mean that god is bringing you to a greater level of authority like it happened to the prodigal son is that true i can see a ring in the spirit and for someone else that ring means destroy oppression it can mean you are going through a cycle of pain are you seeing that now just generically interpreting that every time you see a ring it means this is error you need the authority of the word of god to interpret the speakings in the spirit otherwise you will use the same mouth to bless another and mislead another and you are sincere this is the unbecoming of the prophetic ministry because of the charismatism around the prophetic ministry and the attractiveness usually when you encounter the spirit of god like that i hope you know it's not only the holy spirit that speaks every spirit has the capacity to speak your human spirit demonic spirits the holy spirit angels are spirits they all speak there is no spirit in the bible whose mouth was silent they all spoke even blood when it gains his spiritual status he speaks is that not true it's in your bible blood has his own spirit and it speaks abel though dead yet speaketh 
it is the word of god that gives balance and jurisdiction so i can for instance look at this my dear friend and in a vision i may look at him and see chains all around him are you seeing now i can look at his wife and see chains all around her now it is left my spiritual understanding is what will give credence and intelligence to my interpreting that vision if i do not know the word of god and the character of how demons operate and their jurisdiction and the way god operates my interpretation will be corrupted by my lack of spiritual intelligence it is not my perception that was wrong i saw correctly but because i am barren of the knowledge of the ways of god i will give credit to even things satan is not allowed to do based on the jurisdiction of the word of god so for instance i can look at the wife now and i'm looking at him and looking at his wife and i'm seeing that there is suddenly she has a horn in the realm of the spirit if i do not know the word of god i will say mr man you have been sitting in the same house with a witch she is not a witch that vision is seeking for spiritual intelligence to filter the explanation she may be the nicest kindest woman but she may be connected to an ordinance that needs to be free that has nothing to do with her now it is your spiritual intelligence that interprets that vision in a way that both reconciles because remember the ministry of the spirit always leads to reconciliation so the knowledge the awareness that god is a reconciler will will filter the way i will interpret that vision we have to pray rise up on your feet lift your voice and pray for these dimensions of encounters in the name of jesus the son of the living god Shalabrandes kepahushiatas Lepreketuzazia katabranda galahasibata Please pray Father open my spirit to your word I confess my ignorance I love you but I have not learned your ways I have studied my bible but I am yet to understand the scope of your ways Grant me access to spiritual illumination Light Very specific light Mention the areas in your life that you seek to see the outstretched arm of God. Grant me light in the area of my finances, O God. Grant me light in the area of my health. Grant me light in the area of my spiritual work. Grant me light in the area of ministry. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course. But I have said, Thou art God's. And all of you are children of the Most High. It says, You shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Someone is praying. Father, I now know why I keep having visions and having dreams. But my interpretations are faulty and is destroying my ministry. Grant me stability through accurate understanding of Scripture. God bless you. Let's pray for the sick. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. And I want to pray for you. Lay your hands there, expecting, believing. Hallelujah. Someone is going to shout here, a loud shout to the hearing of everybody. The moment that happens, the healing power of God will begin to move right now i decree by the spirit of the living god agree with me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus my god there's such anointing moving here in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus, the name of jesus. right now i rebuke the spirit of infirmity i command the spirit of infirmity hear the word of the lord be banished from the bodies of God's people in the name of Jesus Christ therefore I declare be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost be healed right now breast lumps be healed right now ovarian cysts be healed right now 
bone conditions be healed right now respiratory conditions be healed right now blood related cases be healed right now heart conditions be healed right now eye conditions be healed right now whether it's your monthly circle or not the power of god is coming on that person it looks like you have the issue of blood i cause it now to the root in the name of jesus christ i cause it now to the root in the name of jesus christ there's someone having a problem with your ear in the name of jesus i declare be healed right now some of you are standing in for your loved ones may the angel of the lord from where you are to where they are bring supernatural healing every family here appointed unto death in the name of jesus that the devil has planned that you will not see the end of this year i declare by the spirit i cancel that counsel in the name of jesus christ be healed completely healed in jesus name the final thing that i will do and then i'll take my leave i believe in impartation impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities everywhere i go and god grants me the grace sir, i share a bit of my experiences and i share those things so that the faith of people can be built when the lord jesus christ appeared to me the light that came from him to me years ago he would give me an instruction that every place and every meeting that i go to there must be someone in that meeting that that light that came from him must leave to that person and listen to me i didn't have the opportunity to deal with the fourth encounter but i pray that god will grant grace but the fourth encounter is the encounter with the body of christ there is the encounter with the son of the living god there is the encounter with the office and the person of the spirit there is an encounter with the word of god but there is the encounter with the body of christ you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya. hey hi -ya, hi -ya. prophesy to yourself I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer and supplication there are many of you here your prayer altars have gone down you don't pray just because you want to pray there is a grace that supplies power for prayer in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands over the entire congregation the grace to endure and pray and travail until you get results right now at the count of three that anointing is coming upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now from the front to the back the left to the right the grace for prayer the grace for intercession the grace to fast the grace to pray receive it in the name of jesus
the spirit of revelation access and insight to scripture illumination and spiritual understanding especially for those of you in ministry in the name of jesus the christ of god may that grace come upon you now i open your eyes to see i open your ears to hear in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and listen and Saul met Samuel and Samuel prophesied to him he said the donkey you have been looking for has been found let me speak to somebody by the spirit I don't care what has left your hand and left your life by the spirit of prophecy and according to the time of life I call it back to your destiny please believe i call it back to your destiny i call it back to your destiny number two samuel told saul he said as you go you will meet three men holding two loaves of bread each they will salute you and they will give it to you let me speak favor on someone's life in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare beginning from today not tomorrow today after this service i stand by the grace of god and i declare may the unction that provides for favor let it mantle your destiny now favor that opens doors favors that creates opportunities i place the word of prophecy upon your head upon your life surprising miracles by the supernatural word of the spirit everyone here trusting god for a job in the name of jesus for many of you before december 31st i speak by the spirit of god may my god surprise you listen i don't know what your god can do but i declare by the spirit may my god surprise you apostle my spiritual life is down i don't even have the passion to study i love god but i found out i'm cold and uninterested about everything spiritual i don't know who that is but in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh passion for the things of god fresh zeal hunger for god i impart upon you supernatural hunger for the presence of god supernatural hunger for the things of the spirit let me pray for every member of this church i've blessed everyone but every member and every worker that you belong to this church you are a faithful person i speak over your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god i open you by prophecy to your season of reward step into prepared blessings listen these are not empty words i assure you you will marvel and wonder at the things god begins to do in your life hallelujah for every one of you that sacrificed to stay some of you left from far and came in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i speak to you i command your territory to honor you listen you see there is a difference between respect and honor you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred by another honor is a grace there are things you do to keep that grace but the grace of god there is the grace that brings honor on a man's life 
it's not just because you are skilled or valuable no sir no sir there are many skilled valuable sincere people but there is no grace for honor because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness the bible says therefore even god thy god hath anointed you with an oil that sets you above your fellows i speak over your life in the name of jesus the christ of god may that grace for honor come on your life i still feel like praying that favor prayer for you before we go exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty i speak over your life that which makes for emptiness even in this season i cancel it right now Amen. esther chapter 2 and verse 15 b and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her i pray that from today everyone who sets their eyes on you i compel them to bless and honor you i compel them to schedule opportunities for you in the name of jesus christ and jacob dug a well and the philistines came and closed it and he dug another well and they closed it and he dug the third one and they left him and he called it Rehoboth he said God has given me my own place I want to speak to someone you need your own space psychologically physically I release upon you the grace that allocates your portion I call the God of portions to honor you in the name of Jesus And Barak called on Balaam to come and curse the nation of Israel. And when he tried again and again, the cult did not work. Because he saw the nation of Israel in a formation with the ark of God in the midst of them. And he says, these are a people God has blessed and I cannot curse. Because the shout of a king is in the midst of them. I create a spiritual fortification around your life that in the name of jesus everything that is not of god every arrow that flies by day and the noisome pestilence by night i declare it returns back to the devil the bible says have you heard this proverb that in a day a nation can be born but he said as soon as zion travails let me pray for you for someone i'm prophesying to you that when the lord will turn again your captivity that it will be like a dream he says when the lord turn again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream and said they are among the hidden the lord had done great things for us he said the lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the negev i speak to you a supernatural turn around from shame and reproach <laughs> hallelujah and at the time of famine there was a raven that brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith. He brought him bread and he ate and fed him there. I invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies. Strange help rising to you from everywhere. In the name of Jesus. We are wrapping up. Let your spirit be open. The Bible says, And that night King Ahasuerus could not sleep. And he said, Bring me the chronicles. And the book was open. And he saw there where Mordecai had delivered him and not been rewarded. Many of you have helped many, but they have forgotten you. I stand by prophecy and I open the book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ, be rewarded for your faithfulness. Be rewarded for your sacrifice in your office be rewarded Amen. hallelujah Amen. the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon joseph had the grace but he was in the dungeon i pray for you whoever must call you in this season and stand in partnership with the holy ghost to lift you to the next level i provoke their ministry over your life
hallelujah and david said is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake hallelujah and they went to lodeba and found a crippled man called mephibosheth he called on ziba and the bible says ziba had 15 sons yet aside from his 15 sons they did not give any of them any inheritance they went and carried um mephibosheth and he said i am a dog what is the king doing with someone like this and the king came and said ziba you and your children will plot the land for this man but as for him he will be with me he will eat with me here all the days of his life can i speak to someone whoever must remember you and send for you to empower you and empower your ministry there is only so much you can do by yourself my brothers and my sisters hear me you need god to raise men to hold your hand listen listen aaron and Hawk could not they could not hold the rod but they could support the hand of the one holding the rod i pray for you strange helpers i speak to the north i speak to the south i speak to the east i speak to the west help them please that everywhere the helpers of your destiny are in this new month i command them to appear <laughs> hallelujah every long-standing project you started building you've not been able to complete it you started a project you've not been able to finish it the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it if god is alpha then he must be omega too i declare by the spirit whatever is threatening completion of anything in your life i command by the spirit of god the finisher's anointing let it come upon you now and for all of you who stand to lift up and support the hand of your dear pastor and his wife i speak to you in the name of jesus the son of the living god as god lifts him may god lift you as god blesses him may god bless you every request you came here with whether i spoke it or not i release my faith with you and in the name of jesus the christ of god return with strange testimony finally whatever will steal away your passion for god whatever will take away your desire for spiritual things whether it is an association or it is a provision or whatever it is may my god take it far from your life and for those of you who are saying apostle I've spent my life serving God but it looks like there is no evidence I speak to you in this season I call it prophetically your season of reward may God himself bring consolations to your Christian experience in the name of Jesus Christ